Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Storytime with Uncle Monkey. I am your Uncle Monkey, and today's story is called The Wendigo. A wealthy man wanted to go hunting in a part of northern Canada where few people had ever hunted. He traveled to a trading post and tried to find a guide to take him, but no one would do it. It was too dangerous, they said. Finally, he found a native who needed money badly and he agreed to take him. The native's name was Defago. They made camp in the snow near a large frozen lake. For three days they hunted, but they had nothing to show for it. The third night, a windstorm came up. They lay in their tent, listening to the wind howling and the trees whipping back and forth. <laughs> to see the storm better, the hunter opened the tent flap. What he saw startled him. There wasn't a breath of air stirring, and the trees were standing perfectly still. Yet he could hear the wind howling. And the more he listened, the more it sounded as if it were calling Defago's name. Yes, I do. Defago, it called. Defago! I must be losing my mind, the hunter thought. But Defago had gotten out of his sleeping bag. He was huddled in a corner of the tent, his head buried in his arm. What's this all about? the hunter asked. It's nothing, Defago said. But the wind continued to call him, and Defago became more tense and more restless. Defago, it called. Defago. Suddenly he jumped to his feet, and he began to run from the tent. But the hunter grabbed him and wrestled him to the ground. You can't leave me here, the hunter shouted. But the wind called again, and Defago broke loose and ran into the darkness. The hunter could hear him screaming as he went. Again and again he cried, Oh, my fiery feet, my burning feet of fire. Then his voice faded away, and the wind died down. At daybreak, the hunter followed Defago's tracks in the snow. They went through the woods, down toward the lake, and then out onto the ice. But soon he noticed something strange. The steps Defago had taken got larger and longer. They were so long, no human being could have taken them. It was as if something had helped him to hurry away. The hunter followed the tracks out of the middle of the lake, but there they disappeared. The hunter followed the tracks out to the middle of the frozen lake, but there they disappeared. At first he thought that Defago had fallen through the ice, but there wasn't any hole. Then he thought that something had pulled him off the ice into the sky, but that made no sense. As he stood wondering what had happened, the wind picked up again. Soon it was howling as it had the night before. Then he heard Defago's voice. It was coming from up above. And again he heard Defago screaming, My fiery feet! My burning feet! But there was nothing to be seen. Now, the hunter wanted to leave that place as fast as he could. He went back to the camp and packed. He left some food for Defago, just in case. And then he started out. Weeks later, he finally reached civilization. The following year, he went back to hunt in that area again. He went to the same trading post to look for a guide. The people there could not explain what had happened to Defago that night, but they had not seen him since then. Maybe it was the Wendigo, one of them said, and she laughed. It's supposed to come out with the wind. It drags you along at great speed until your feet are burned away, and more of you than that. Then it carries you into the sky and drops you. <laughs> it's just a crazy story, but that's what some of the natives think. A few days later, the hunter was at the trading post again. A native came in and sat by the fire. He had a blanket wrapped around him, and he wore his hat so that you couldn't see his face. The hunter thought there was something familiar about him. He walked over and asked, Are you Defago? The native didn't answer. Do you know anything about him? No answer. 
He began to wonder if something was wrong, if the man needed help, but he couldn't see his face. To get a look at him, he lifted the native's hat. Then he screamed. There was nothing under the hat but a pile of ashes.